Hello everyone, my name is Sean Ray with your Cedar Hill Parks and Recreation Department. I'm here today reading the Lorax from everyone's favorite author, Dr. Zeus, for Heroes and Helpers Storytime. We're filming today at our future library in the park site, and we look forward to delivering this exciting project to everyone in the near future. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever seen excepting old crows is a street of the lifted lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the lorax once stood just as long as it could before someone lifted the lorax away. What was the lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old oncer still lives here. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the oncer. Do not knock on his door. He stays in his lurkum on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum, cold under roof, where he makes his own clothes out of myth muff moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail in the shell of a great, great grandfather's nail. Then he pulls up the pill, makes a most careful count to see you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what he, you paid him away in his smoothie, his secret strange hole in his gluvenous glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by a whisper of my phone for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Slurp, down slips the whisper of my phone to your ear. And the old oncer's whispers are not very clear since they have to come down through a sniggly hose and he sounds as if he has smallish bees in his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back such a long time ago. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet, and the clouds were still clean, and the song of the Swamsea song rang out in space. One morning I came to this gorgeous place, and I first saw the trees, the tufula trees, the bright colored tufts of the tufula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown barbalotes frisking about in their barbalot suits as they played in the shade of the truffle tree. From the rippless pond from the, came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. And those trees, those trees, those tough of the trees, all of my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk and they had the sweet smell of fresh buttermilk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I would do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle tree with one chop. And with great skill, full skill, and with great speedy speed, I took this off tough and I knitted a thief. The incident I finished, I heard a gazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I'd chopped down. It was a short man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortest and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpest and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues, and I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed, What's that thing that you've made with my 
truth of the talk. Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I've chopped just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a thief. A thief is a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use those for carpet, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seat. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would need such a full feed. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong, for just at that minute, a chap came along, and he thought that the feed that I knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety-eight. I laughed at the Lorax, you poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all, built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Lunceler family to get mighty rich. Come over here fast, take the road to North Niche, turn left on Wickamee, sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wunster family was working full tilt. We were all knitting thieves just as busy as bees to the sound of chopping of thrumpet trees. Then, oh baby oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was so slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four of trees in one smack. Four times as fast as before, and the Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door, he snapped. I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I also in charge of the brown burbelotes who played in the shade in their barbelute soaps and happily live truffle of fruits. Now, Thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's no truffler fruit to go around. And my poor barber lutes are getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They have had to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the one sir, felt sad as I watch them all go, but business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummy tummies, you know. I meant no harm, I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads of the thieves I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went on biggering, selling in more thieves. I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes that the old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax. He coughed and he wheezed. He sneezed and he snuffled. He gnarled and sniffed. Once later, he cried with a coriferous croak. Munster, you're making such smuggerous smoke. My poor swarmy songs, why they can't sing a note. They can't sing with all this thought, smog in their throat. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They can't live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape the smog you've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about gloopity glop. Your machine chugs on day and night without stop making gloopity glop. Also schmickly schlop. And what about 
you do with that leftover goo. I'll show you, you dirty old once or man you. You're glumming the pond where the humming fish hum. No more can they hum for their gills are all gone. So I'm sending them off. Oh, this future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap yap and say bad, bad, bad. While I have the right, sir, I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more tuffalo trees into thieves, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sneaking smack of an ax on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle of tree of them all. No more trees, no more thieves, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncle and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke stars. Now all that was left beneath the bad smelling sky was my em big empty factory, the Lorax, and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through the hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that Lorax left here was this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since the day I, I was sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the Wensler, now that you are here, the words of the Lorax seem perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So catch, calls the Wensler, he let something fall. It's a truthful seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truthful seeds. And truthful trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack, then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. So thank you all for joining us today. Hope you have a great afternoon and we look forward to seeing you in our parks. Thank you all.